you have a bit of everything here. You know, you have the Romans, you've got this Viking, a Viking part of the city, you've got the Normans who build this enormous castle on the site. You then have that swept away over the years. A prison is built within part of the castle precinct. That's swept away again, and in the 20th century, the whole thing become or part of the site, <clears throat> becomes a car park. So when you take Piccadilly and you take York Castle, the car park area, you've actually got a little bit of everything of York's archaeology and uh, urban history represented on this site. So it's really exciting in that respect. But I think what that actually demonstrates is that York has developed through these uh, periods of intense activity. So you have this agrarian landscape the, before the Romans arrive. I, I like to think of the, you know, the cows drinking out of the river, you know, the trees growing, the fields full of, 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 uh, of, of, of crops, little farmsteads scattered around, and then the Romans arrive and everything changes. The Romans may have chosen this spot for a particular reason. They may have decided that, or they may have found out that this area, which we now call York, was already a significant place for these Iron Age tribes. Now, such is the depth of deposit over the top of where those deposits might survive, such is the degree of later disturbance that we have no idea what prehistoric deposits underlie the Romans. But the Romans change everything. You know, that's when you can start to talk about York as an urban centre. It sort of reaches this sort of stasis, and then the Vikings arrive, and again, everything changes. They lay the place out according to a... a, a they divide the street frontages up into neat tenement plots, and they remain traceable in the townscape down to the to this day. So if you walk along Fossgate and Walngate, you will see these narrow tenement plots, and they all have their origins in that period when the Vikings arrive in the late 9th, early 10th century and start laying out and dividing up land in the city. When the Normans arrive, you have this 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 further period of transformation between 1066 and 1100. Two castles are built. The Minster is, is rebuilt as a Norman cathedral. St Mary's Abbey is established. This Domus Regis, which lies uh, underneath West Officers, is built. We don't know what that is, what form it took, but you have these huge, significant new builds in the townscape. They build a dam across the River Foss, flood the Foss Valley to provide the water defences for the castle. In, the, in, <clears throat> in doing so, they create this huge fish pool, the King's Fish Pool, which dominates the whole east side of the city. So again, another transformational episode. And then the city accommodates all of these changes. People get used to what's going on. Bits of pieces are filled in. And then, you know, with the dissolution of the monasteries, which does affect this area to some extent because the outer bailey of York Castle in the 13th century was given to the Augustinian friars and they built their friary on this site. That becomes a major element of the medieval town. And in the 1530s, of course, that's what wrapped up, the land sold off. And so you start to get um, you know, 16th century houses which in the 17th century, you see the emergence of these rather grand houses in this area, Cumberland House down on King's Stairs, Fairfax House behind us here, um, the other John Carr mansion, the Masonic Lodge in Castlegate, and the now lost mansion, which stood on the site of the car park, which included, can you believe, the Mott and Clifford's Tower in its garden as this sort of monumental folly Fancy having that in your back garden. <laughs> Staggering. Anyway, so that, 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 that rolls on. And then you have the construction of uh, the prison in the 19th century in the car park. And that 19th century development is all tied up with 
the coming of the railways, this, you know, another of these transformational episodes in the development of York. And the railways, we still, I think, get coming to grips with what mass transport means in terms of living in urban places. And I think the city is still assimilating you know, the outcomes from the, the, that, that episode of the, the railways transforming large parts of the city between 1830 and 1880. And the interesting thing about all of this is that, of course, when you start to look at redevelopment in a place like uh, the Castle Gateway, Piccadilly Castle Car Park, this area behind me, You've got to try and sort of assimilate and think, well, what does all that mean in terms of what we can do in this space? How do you, how do you build that into your decision-making process? What, what do you give value to? What has, has more value than something else? And I think that's an interesting conversation that, that uh, you know, needs to be brought out as part of this process.